welcome to the Lisa Saunders Show. I'm Lisa Saunders, and today we're going to discuss how expressive arts can be used to rebuild our lives after loss. Uh, I know I've done that from personal experience. Um, to give us ideas on ways we can express ourselves, I've invited Dr. Joanne Z. Moore, a life after loss retreat leader, and Amy J. Berry, a features writer and certified expressive arts educator. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited, Amy, to have you on. I've never had you on before. And you're a big name for people who, who live in my area, which is the Mystic area, because you're always in the day writing right. articles about people. <laughs> and there's so many times when I'm writing about people, I do a search to find out what else has been written about them, and it's your, your name. <laughs> also. And you've written about them. Yeah, anyway, and you've written about me, too. And you're a great yeah. writer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, Joanne, you lead retreats for those who have suffered loss. I uh, do. How did you get into that? I learned about retreats as a child because my mother practiced Roman Catholicism, and one of her great joys in life was to go on retreat. And she would leave for the weekend. She would leave my father with us seven children. Oh, my gosh. And she <laughs> left with such glee and joy <laughs> that I always wondered what happened on retreats. And she came back with a sense of peace and harmony, and everything was calm in our house when she got back from retreat. So when I grew up, I decided to explore what retreats could do for me. And I used places like Ender's Island and Mystic, uh, the Mercy Center in Madison. You've been to Ender's Island? Oh, sure, retreat. overnights. I mean, oh, really? I walk the dog there all the time, and I've always seen that they have retreats, yeah. but I never tried one. They have retreats, and you can just go and rent a room for a night and have your own peaceful retreat as well. Ooh. So retreats come in all forms and shapes. Some mm -hmm. are silent retreats. Uh, some are very collaborative, cooperative, just spending time together. Mm -hmm. Usually a retreat gives you some time alone to reflect on your life and your relationship perhaps with God or with the Spirit. So when I started going through some difficult times in my life, retreat was a natural place for me to go. Because to me it was a place when your life was a little chaotic, it was a healthy strategy to reorganize your thought process, to get in touch with your core values, and to seek a strategy to deal with the chaos in your life. Mm -hmm. And so since I had such great experiences with it, I decided uh, after I'd experienced some loss in my life, my husband died, that this would be a place to bring people together who had experienced all sorts of loss, uh, whether it's your parents, your best friend, your child, a peaceful place, a safe environment to be honest with yourself and with the others around you and to, to find some support from other people who are going through a similar experience, though no two are alike and you should never expect that in the group. So what I wanted to do is to provide that environment. Now, did you start providing that after your husband died? Yes. And what year did he die in? Oh, 2009. And you were how old? 57. Okay, so I, I consider widowhood and 50s in the young range because you still have half a life left to live. Some of you, you, you might live to be 114, right? I intend to. <laughs> I have every intention okay. to. But in fact, every time you read the paper and you see about a car accident death, a military death, a suicide, these are all young people. Right. And there are lots of young widows as well who are parents still raising young children. So they really need to have their head on straight in order to live well. Well, I was just going to say that was my experience because I was widowed when I was 32. 32, two that is so Very young, young children and um, a a nine-month-old and a four-year-old, and there wasn't anything available like this. So that's why I know how important it is to have mm -hmm. retreats for people that are going through a loss and to, because you feel so alone. And when you're young, you really feel like there's nobody kind of in the same boat as you are. How many, um, well, how many retreats have you led 
since you started getting into this? Or is this something new? Or I think you're certified, aren't you? Can you yeah, well, I, yeah. I do. With Joanne, we've done um, a couple of retreats together, uh, but I've been doing workshops. So I've been doing okay. like four week or six week or one time oh. workshops where people come, you know, each week and we do a different kind of uh, project. Or oh, who have you done workshops through? Like what kind of organization or did you do them on your own? Some on or? my own through libraries, through art centers, through um, even went to a corporation where people just needed to, to do some art. Um, you know, do um, expressive arts as a way of stress release, but we'll get Yeah, you became all that. certified. Um, what does that mean? Like, how did you get this training, and what is it exactly? Okay. <laughs> so I'll, maybe I'll start by just explaining what expressive arts actually means. Yes. So it's basically like instead of up here in your head, it's from the heart, it's from the soul. And so it's basically trying to get into your right brain and out of your left brain so much. Um, a lot of people are not so balanced um, because we're such a high tech, we're so plugged into everything all the time that we're much more in that sort of, um, you know, the logical side of the brain versus the more intuitive. Which side is the logical the, side? The, the left side. Is that true? Or, yeah. or is that just people make that up? <laughs> no, no that's really all true. <laughs> very, very much figured out. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of science to back all this. So okay. the right side is the more intuitive, image, imagistic, uh, creative side. And uh, a lot of people are just getting out of practice with um, exercising that muscle. And, um, or people as they get older think, I know I'm not an artist, I'm not a writer, I can't, I can't. So the thing about expressive arts is there's no right or wrong way. It's not about precise art or writing. It's just about expressing feelings. And um, so, what expressive arts includes is writing, visual arts, like drawing, painting, um, movement, like dance, music, sounding, all of those things. And you can, um, if you were going to a workshop or a retreat, you could do one of those things, uh, or you could combine any group of, you know, any different expressive arts together, um, which can be really interesting. Um, and I often combine um, the writing and the drawing part of it. And um, so, um, so the kind of like writing would be poetry, stream of consciousness, things like that. And the kind of generally um, a lot of the art would be just colors and shapes and forms and things that kind of just come out with these writing or, or art prompts that I do. And then, you know, it's sort of an unconscious thing what comes out. Um, as you guide people through different prompts and questions. Like about. how does that help somebody in the grieving process? Well, so, um, so the way that works for the grieving process is that you are, um, the reason that expressive art and writing and all of the expressive arts is so healing is that one, you're getting it out of your body. You're getting things that people hold in and they don't express and they can't talk about maybe, and it's putting it out in a shape, a form, in writing, in art. And you can, the other thing that is, and is really kind of cool about it is that you can transform like a negative thoughts, write down all these negative and difficult feelings you're having, and then write something or draw something else that transforms it into a more positive kind of um, way of looking at it. And, and it actually facilitates healing. There's been a lot proven. Um, James Pennebaker has done uh, years and years of studying on expressive writing for people that are ill or going through any kind of um, emotional mental trauma. And um, by doing this, um, they have indications of it, it healing people and um, um, facilitating the healing through illness and through all kinds of different yeah. I found that to be true when my daughter was born severely disabled you know basically without a brain I found yeah. Yeah. that I finally started getting relief by writing down some of this like horrible negative thoughts exactly and I actually um, and then trying to see okay well that it's not so bad my, my the worst that I'm writing isn't so horrible and, I, and then I was finding a way out of it and back to being humorous again, which I enjoy doing because it lifts my yeah. soul, but I found Psalm, the book of Psalms, I found a lot of help in that because those <laughs> Psalm writers are writing about horrible things I would never yeah. say to God without <laughs> fear of being struck by lightning, yeah. you know, but because they were going through horrible, horrible times, but then they would come out 
and start praising when they started thinking of the good things. Mm -hmm. um, you have a poem, right? Do you have a sample of this kind of yeah, work? Yes. Um, so if you could read it, that yeah, would be great. Definitely. To give um, us an idea. Now, who wrote the poem so you're this about is, to read? This is purely using expressive writing, and Alice Walker wrote this poem. So what I did was I give the poem to people in a, at a retreat or in a group. This and, particular one? Yeah, this okay. is just one example. This of is like an things. exercise. You like Okay, this is a sample exercise. Right. Okay. So um, I would give them this poem and we'd read it out loud, which I'll do, just so I'm explaining what happens. Yeah. And then after they, we've read it, I ask them to write their own poem, kind of they can go line by line, just transforming that poem into sort of a more positive message for themselves. And so um, it's been amazing, the different things that have come out. So this is the poem that's always the same. And then I can read you one of the responses. Yeah, I'd love to hear so it. So it's called Moody Woman. I am a moody woman. My temper black as my brows, as sharp as my nails, as impartial as a flood that is always seeking, seeking, seeking somewhere to stop. So the response was called hopeful. I am a hopeful woman. <laughs> my hope is white as snow, as soft as my feather bed, my pillow, as peaceful as the ocean. I am a hopeful woman who is seeking, seeking, seeking always to change. So that's that. Is that somebody like naturally came up with that alternative? Yep. Because so, they have this poem in front of them and they look at that line and think, you know, how can, how do I think of myself? Um, but what if they feel just as black as the person that wrote it? Well, sometimes that's what they then have to write about. Oh, so they would, they don't have to make no, it be positive. No. They just, if they can't find it within yes. themselves at that moment, <laughs> They can write their own black thought, and it can and just be sort of out. <laughs> can be sort of gray. I mean, it's not like this isn't you know just a Pollyanna kind of thing anyway. Right. It's about just having hope that things will get better. But usually, when when you do present it to people, you know, people want to find something to make it better, and you know, <laughs> and they they react, you know, and then they're even surprised. Oh wow, I I thought I was so down and so depressed, but look, I really have this in compared me. to this lady. <laughs> I'm doing okay. <laughs> Sometimes it is a matter of comparison. Well, I think that's that. Yeah, that's an important um, aspect of this is that versus like being an art therapist or right or or doing that where because I'm not a trained therapist. So what oh, okay. I'm doing, the, the facilitating oh, idea okay. is that I'm leading people by giving them the prompts and all these different ways to to respond to kind of figure it out for themselves. So they. Um, Maybe they did a drawing, for example, and um, and then um, I asked them some questions about what do they see in their drawing, and when they sort of have these aha moments when it's like, wow, I didn't realize that's what it was about, mm -hmm. and the other, and the reason they're also comfortable about doing this in a group is it's not a critique group. It's n there's no criticism. You don't have to share. You can share if you want. So um, it gives people freedom to just get it out and then other people will respond but more in a way of how it maybe resonates with them so you're having this individual experience that's really powerful and also the support of the group is that something you did in madison when you had a retreat there yes you do this okay so you did that and you're doing it at you have some upcoming retreats that you're doing that as well yeah. right and, uh, yeah in stonington on April 30th, we oh, okay. have a, just a day-long retreat. Okay, because you have, you have several. I mean, I know you have others planned on top of that, but the, right. for, the next coming one is the April one. Correct. Okay. Right. Um, so you're having... We're, we're having writing and art activities as well, plus a labyrinth walk. And you're oh. certified, or what do you do with the labyrinth? I am. Explain that again. I'm a certified labyrinth <laughs> facilitator. <laughs> labyrinth is an ancient form of walking meditation. Mm -hmm. And... I love the idea of meditation, and I know that it's really good for us, but I cannot sit still long enough to do it. I get monkey brain. Mm -hmm. So the walking allows me to move during the meditative process, and it's a walk that takes about 20 minutes. So we'll be doing that as well. <clears throat> wow, so it sounds fun. <laughs> and it's a beautiful it's a location in Stonington. It is a lot of fun. And I did the writing, too, right after Joe died. Mm -hmm. 
I had a lot of recurrent thoughts that kept running through. I love I love when you explain this. I'm sorry I'm interrupting you because you're about mm. to explain it, but say I just want people to hear this because it really meant something to me. You have these thoughts because that's what happens. I have these recurrent What yeah. if, if only, you know, maybe if I had tried or maybe if we hadn't done this, maybe things would have turned out differently. And I kept having these recurrent thoughts. And my social worker at the Brigham and Women's Hospital said, write it down because those recurrent thoughts are a way of your brain trying to remember these things. And if you write it down, then your brain is given permission to let it go. Mm -hmm. I love that because exactly. it's so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's probably the whole point yeah. behind expressive arts, yeah. right? Um, there's other expressive arts aside from writing. Like, I'm only really familiar with writing. Um, Joanne, you've done many well, things if you want to talk about that. Yeah, I love writing too, but I did this quilt. And it's a log cabin quilt. And my dad died about a year ago. And then my niece had a baby boy. So I took my dad's flannel shirts Aww. and I cut a little square out. And the center of each square in the quilt is my dad's uh, flannel shirt. Aww. And so my dad was a big stand-up comedian kind of guy. Uh -huh. So I said, you know, baby William, may your life be centered in humor Aww. after his great-grandfather. So that was a way... I used my art. I'm not an artist, unfortunately. But that's okay. art, right? Does that it count is. as expressive okay. art? It, to me, it was expressive <laughs> because sewing. I was sewing. connecting You're this baby to his yeah. great-grandfather. Yeah. And then you had something else you and wanted then to show my, us. I didn't know what to do with my wedding jewelry. Oh, boy, after your spouse died. You know, mm -hmm. your wedding jewelry is so much a part of you, and you hate to let it go completely. Uh, but you don't really want to wear it as wedding jewelry anymore either. So my son and his bride uh, took my wedding ring and it encircles. Oh. It encircles a little cutout tree. <laughs> Let's see if I can show this to you. Okay, so there's a little cutout tree here. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. Because we own acres of trees and we are kind of a little logging business and then the plain disc in the back has words from our wedding recessional oh. uh, the hills are alive with the sound of music are you serious that was your yeah your kidding. yes that was <laughs> oh that was uh, that was my wedding recessional and so this ring this necklace that i love to wear um doesn't really look like a wedding ring anymore but it's still a big part of wow. me. And then we took the engagement ring, and my son had it melt. The band melted into the band for her, my daughter-in-law's wedding band. So my my engagement ring is part of her wedding band. And then my jeweler, Tony Suarez at Northern Light Gems, said he can take Joe's wedding ring and cut it in half and make it into two earrings for me. Uh -huh. I know, I always hear his voice, but to have him actually in my <laughs> ear will be uh, something um, I'll try to cherish. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think he'll talk to you? This is how you I'm change the toilet plunger or whatever it is? Yes, you know? <laughs> yes. I'm hoping that he'll give me answers because he was really smart. Because <laughs> you, you've had to learn how to do everything in your house, I right? Have. And how about you, Amy? You had to learn everything to do in your house. Other than grieving, you have practical concerns, right? right. right? <laughs> how to do things. How to parent by yourself. And you yeah. wrote a book about that. Well, I wrote well, a children's a book. A children's book. Um, what a was child's the name of that? grief journey because I felt that people didn't really understand what children were going through um, at all, or especially really young children that they didn't get it. And so it sort of, and I didn't like any of the books that were out there, and none of them seemed to be, you know, sort of serious enough. Like it was about an animal dying, which is sad, but it wasn't like losing a parent. And um, <laughs> and I just didn't like the way they were written. So being a writer, I decided to write my own children's book that just it sort of takes children through the grief journey and has the hopeful part at the end, again, about connecting with other people and going mm -hmm. through the process because you can't go around it and then mm -hmm. coming out, you know, the other end. So, um, so that's... Um, that was that was years ago at this point because um, I've been remarried a long time now and mm -hmm. um, and uh, have adult 
children that are doing just great. <laughs> so, and Joanne, you wrote wonderful. a book after the loss of a spouse, What Next? And yours right. is a very practical guidebook mm -hmm. on what to do next. You know, um, now you also have some things in there like um, hobbies. Mm -hmm. Would you call, would, do well, some of these expressive arts become hobbies for people, do you think? Um, if sure. they find release in it? Well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, a lot of, I guess, the way I look at it, too, is, um, is with what I'm doing is if people come in to do the art or writing and um, we're just kind of getting it out and expressing it, then later it, it triggers in them that, you know, they stop doing that negative talk. I can't write. I can't draw. And that may be the next step then they take, whether they work on these things at home or they take a more maybe structured kind of an art or writing class, but um, it, it, so it can be sort of an impetus to get people um, into that creative place. Now your next like um, retreat that's in Stonington, Connecticut, what expressive arts were, are, will people find there? Well, so what we're doing is um, I'm going to do um, expressive writing, but that can also use like visual prompts and things. You know, people look at a picture of something or bring in something special to them and then they write you know, based on that. Um, Do you tell people ahead of time that sign up for the retreat? Bring well, yeah, if I was, if I'm going to have them bring something in, I would. But what I try to keep it really spontaneous and so people don't sort of obsess about what's <laughs> going to happen because the whole idea is to have a really spontaneous response um, and to just get, you know, and it, this all sounds kind of heavy, but it's also about getting playful and having fun in that when adults... Mm -hmm get to a point where they forget sometimes to play and have fun and get, you know, and again, that right brain, you know, part of us yeah. that really matters. Um, and so then we have an expressive um, arts person from hospice who, who is going to do more um, visual kinds of stuff like doing, um, making mandalas. And there's so many things you can do with- What's um, a mandala? So, do you want to explain a mandala? Or, mandalas? <laughs> do you know what? They yeah, are? I do know what they are, but I didn't know if you. They're, they're, it's an ancient art form that goes back, I don't know how many, you know, thousands of years, where all it has to be is a circle with a center point, and then you can do anything you want with it. And if you look even online, you will find it's sort of like snowflakes. There are just thousands of ways that people interpret that. So, it gives people a structure to be. And then they can play within that. So they could make lines and be more organized, or they can be very just sort of abstract with it. And how do people uh, get to go on these retreats? What do you have to do or be? Well, just go to our website, pathfindermag.com. Okay. And it's easy to sign up online. Okay. And then we'll send you a welcome letter and tell you everything that you need to know about that retreat. Great, and you even provide transportation from the train station, well, right? I, if somebody we had will to, from if, the Mystic train station because it's not that far. Wow! And so people can come from a little bit of a distance. We have overnight rooms available as well. Yeah, that's great because Amtrak oh, runs yeah. right through Mystic, yeah. which is wonderful because yeah. Mystic's such a small village. Yeah. But you know, if you pick them up from the train station, absolutely, because there's not a lot of cabs in Mystic. No, <laughs> but there must be some. <laughs> I'm sure that there are some. I'm sure there are some. Okay, so they just go but, to your website and they can yeah. find out about that retreat but if they can't make that date you they'll well, you have a one uh, the like I was well, amazed we'll have when you the did the newsletters and we'll keep yeah. informing oh, so people, people can sign up for your ones. newsletter yes um, so that they get something once a month yes, in their inbox this, tells right. them what's going on and you also yeah. link to articles relevant Right. We, to, about, we always about have articles what? about a widower, widower of history. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> I write those. <laughs> uh, because, you know, you're not the first person to go through this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it helps to look back at other people and how they've managed it. And you have poetry on there. Yeah, we have you cooking have... for one and how to travel by yourself. All kinds of All, things. How to live by yourself. How to downsize. That's right. How to shop for under a budget. You know, because right. we don't just have things for greeting right. people. You have things like, it's a lifestyle magazine. It's a lifestyle just, magazine for people who have experienced a loss. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, maybe for the first time in your life, you can do anything you want. Right. And that's huge. Mm -hmm. And it takes a long way to get to that understanding. Like when I look at my art progress, like probably the first art project that I did was this one. And ah. my assignment from my teacher was there's beauty in degeneration. 
So go out <laughs> and film that. And so most everybody went out to a log and uh, got a mushroom on a log, mm -hmm. you know. But what I did was I took, where am I? I took a, <laughs> a, a vase of tulips. And these are brand new, not opened yet. And then a picture of us on our wedding day. And then with the uh, tulips opening, us in middle age taking a hike, starting to droop a little bit. Oh. Then Joe during chemo, me shaving his head. Oh, wow. And then you at his graveside. And then me at his graveside with the tulips dead. Which is the cover of your book. Right. And so, did I knock you? No. <laughs> um, Are we done? We're done. <laughs> That's a little funky. But you can see right. how dark that is compared to the joy of just having him around my neck in a beautiful necklace. Mm -hmm. And then passing on my father to his great grandchild in the there's more joy showing up through my work. Joe Biden was speaking to a family of veterans, and he said, I, I promise you someday, at the sound of your loved one's name, you will smile with a memory instead of crying. Mm -hmm. And I can see, by looking at my art projects over the years, how that's become true. Because yeah, yeah. now when I hear Joe's name, I smile at a memory. Mm -hmm. Or I'm thankful for what I did have. Right. You know, it's not all this dark anymore. Right. It's not just seeing a degenerative process any longer. You know, so my spirit has matured and grown, and, and art has yeah. really helped me on my way. And I'm someone who never had yeah. an art class in my whole life. Well, that's 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 the point, that's right? The point. Of doing because right. people probably have no idea that they want to do this. Yeah. Well, we only yeah. have two minutes left. So, what do you wish you could? tell people? <laughs> I would love to tell people to give them, if they're going through a grieving process or if they've experienced any kind of a loss, and it can be a loss of a job, a loss of a friend, a loss of a child or a parent or a spouse, that taking the time for yourself by going on retreat, by being around people who have been down that path before you, is the best gift that you can give yourself. And to take that time and rest, rejuvenate, tap into your creativity, and, uh, and allow some growth and joy to start to happen. Because I heard such great things about your retreat in Madison, where, where people came and, and mm -hmm. left a little lighter. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we learned so much, too. I never cease to be amazed. It's so positive for me. I just love doing this work with people because you know, you see people that are having such a hard time and connecting with feelings and having so much courage to go forward. And so um, it's just it's just really inspiring to do. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for thank coming you, on my show so you could, we can share you. this with our watchers. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on the Lisa Saunders Show, and I'll see you next week.